The Molsk is a map unlike any other. From its crippling terrain to its funneled points of interest, the entirety of the map is a majesty of creative genius and maniacal challenges. Today, we are going to have a two-part video, first part playthrough, to help you guys get a good run and teach you some of the things that I've learned to keep me alive in the beginning. And second part is going to be the special items and the mission that you're going to do without any spoilers, because I want you guys to experience this map in its entirety. Let's go. We spawn in, and I look left, and I look right. I see no buildings. All right. In this case, back to the ocean, and we're going to run, okay? Before we start this adventure, let's talk about what makes the Mals unique, okay? One, it's on an island, so the coast is everywhere. So putting your back to the ocean and running isn't always good, the best call, okay? Two, there are zero food spawns south of the middle point of the map, okay? Like the separating point, which we'll talk about later. Um, the cold can kill you and will kill you. Look in the bottom right right now. My cold bar is absolutely empty. Because of that, I'm losing HP, right? If we look right here, I'm losing HP, okay? We start off with the heat pack, thankfully. So we're going to put that on our hands, activate that bad boy, and boom, we're going. Another thing about Namals that's unique is we can get frostbite on all of these things that are blue, Okay. Now, if I have clothes on them, I won't get frostbite on them. But if these clothes get even damp, even a little wet, I can get frostbite on anything, okay? So I need to cover all of these, and I need to hurry up and find buildings. The longer I spend out in the woods in the beginning, the higher, first off, probability I'm going to die to the cold because I'm going to freeze to death. And also alongside that, the higher probability that I am going to get frostbite, right? I need to cover these all as soon as possible. Step one, cover them all, okay? Next up, the unique thing about the Molsk would be that insulation is your best friend here. In other maps, it doesn't matter as much, right? But here, it matters the most, okay? I'm gonna gather a long stick here because I wanna make a fire soon, okay? Now, the last thing I would say that's unique about the Molsk is that there is a storm that can kill you and will kill you if you're not indoors when it happens, okay? And we'll we'll talk about that more later on. But first things first, I'm looking for clothes. I'm looking for insulation, right? Oh, baby, baby. Okay, so right here, I found low insulation. I'm going to put them on. This one is medium insulation, better than mine. I'm going to put it on, okay? You're always going to start with a watch. Don't worry about it. It's just telling you what time it is on the server but you can look outside and see so i'm gonna check here too so it's really important when we do this map that we remember where the coast is and the coast is that way okay because i came up from that way Ooh, some gloves so watch that slot is going to be covered no longer blue face mask even though i don't want it check it out no longer blue right now i finished looting my first area Ooh, brass nuts beautiful I just finished looting my first area, right? And I have everything covered except the top of my head. What I would recommend in a circumstance like this, okay, is you take your rags and you craft whatever is the last thing you need. I need a head wrapping. So you scroll wheel, I should show you. Scroll wheel, find head wrapping, and hold that, right? We, I can't express how important it is that you cover every part of your limbs, okay? And now that we have taken care of that, we are completely covered. We could get on to the second thing, which finds some buildings, dude. Okay. Now, the good thing about Namalsk related to food is that the civilian buildings to the north of the map spawn a lot of food very often. The spawn rate is like through the roof compared to Chinaris, and it's on a reset timer that is way higher as well. So not only does it spawn more food, but it spawns food more often, okay? And what I'm looking for is I'm running inland, okay? Because I don't see anything. I just see rolling hills. I'm looking for any semblance of a town or anything. In general, they have like maybe a shed in the middle of nowhere or this in the middle of nowhere. But they seldom have a fence in the middle of nowhere, right? Or something like that. Fences are a good marker. So I have this really long fence. I'm just going to run along it, okay? As you can see, I'm already cold. I'm freezing to death, so I'm losing HP, but I'm not at risk of getting frostbite. So I have, I'm in a good way right now, okay? And now that I've covered all of my limbs, my next goal is to get items that are better insulation than my current 
so I am not all the way blue. Because if I have a little circle of light blue there, right, in the bottom of that little thermometer in the bottom right-hand corner, if I can just get that little light blue, you know what I mean? I'll be okay. I won't be losing HP, and I could be perfectly fine to spend as much time as I need in the cold. Okay, it looks like this old petrol lighter is huge. A little hip pack, too. We're, we're balling out of control here. Too much money. Don't know what to do with my hands. Okay, so another thing about the mosque is the towns, such as these, one, are going to have a, a great deal higher percentage of players, but also a much greater density of zombies than you have ever seen on Shinaris, okay? Reason being, it is... It is intended to be uniquely hard. Uniquely difficult, right? So... It's a running zombie right there. Oh my goodness, I thought I was a player. I was like, I'm just trying to do this tutorial, please, baby. Alright, so we're gonna get into these houses, and I bet we're gonna find a fair amount of food in here, okay? If I do aggro zombies, I want to make sure to aggro them one at a time, okay? Poncho, boom, my head's covered. Even though that is incredibly bright, you know, it's still better best insulation compared to bad, okay? I have high insulation here versus medium, but I could fix this and maybe even get it up higher than high, okay? I think it's best as well. We're going to keep going here. A knife, beautiful. We already got gloves, so we're going to keep our gloves. We'll go over here. Boom. Canned pork. Beautiful. Someone locked that. What a jerk. Some ammo. So as you can see, like, if you compare this building to any one of these buildings you loot on Trenaris or Livonia, you're not finding this much loot in the building, right? Um, it's done intentionally. It's meant to coddle you when you're on the north. And then as you move south, it's going to get harder and harder, okay? Now, we're still cold. We're going to need to make a fire here pretty soon. But we're going to want to loot all of these houses. Because if you look over the food, it says frozen, okay? So we're going to have to even... In an even worse situation than you thought before, we're going to have to thaw out all of our food that comes frozen, okay? So not only am I dying to the world, but the food that I get, and I'm slowly losing all of my food, right? If you look down there, three arrows pointed down. Even the food I get isn't on my side. It's freezing to death, okay? See, frozen, okay? And we're going to all talk about how to navigate that. Ooh, pristine gloves right there. I'll talk about how to navigate the, the food aspect in a little bit the frozen so don't worry about it okay so we're gonna want to make a fire but we're always something i suggest is you're always gonna want to make a fire only after you found some food items because you're not gonna want to make two fires that's a nightmare okay we got a backpack here so as you see backpack isn't a slot that could get me freezing but the backpack does have an insulation value medium insulation so let's see if i put this on and I walk around because how fast I run determines how cold I am too, right? If I'm standing still, I'll be a little bit colder than if I'm a full sprint. I may even be able to, with these current items, be able to get myself into a not freezing to death circumstance, okay? So I highly recommend if you haven't watched the other tutorials, I'm not going to really talk about how to fight zombies in this. I'm going to talk about specifically things related to the malls. So if you're looking for tips and tricks on stuff like that, probably watch one of the other guides. So as you can see, this is what I intended. I've got a chunk missing from my HP. That's how long it took me to get to this town. That is normally what happens, okay? And what I'm going to want to do is as soon as that chunk happens, I'm going to want to take that as a, a stern warning that I need to get my butt moving. I need to get a fire happening, okay? So we're going to go into this house here. Where you make fires is going to be in, oh my goodness, a bag of rice. So bag of rice comes not frozen. It's one of the few items alongside cereal and crackers. Ooh, and a camp pork. Dog food, sorry. All right, we're gonna, where we make a fire really matters. Especially, it's a little dark right now, right? So where I make this fire is going to change the sort of landscape for the rest of my adventure. Because if I make it in this house and it's getting dark out and everyone sees this illumination, right? It could really result in some uh, some unfortunate, unfortunate times. So I'm gonna head back here and I'm gonna try and find a fire pit in a location that's a little less, mm, how do I say, like in the middle of where everyone's gonna be. Okay, so I'm gonna head back here. Looks like I have two buildings here. I'm gonna loot these cars really quick. We're gonna make a fire. So I already have ammo box, which is gonna give me paper for kindling. 
I have the lighter, and I have sticks. We're good to go. All right, let's get over here. So, there's a fire right here. I'm going to go ahead and put a bad boy in there. And now we're going to talk about how to use food to keep yourself warm. Because food is good to, like, warm up, right? Like, I want all this food. What we're going to do before we light the fire, we're just going to drop all of our food at our feet, okay? And then we're going to light this bad boy up. I got a petrol lighter, so it's very easy for me. Keep in mind, you could always get bark and, and sticks and make a hand drill kit, though. But boom, we got a fire going, okay? And now this is where we like to party, okay? Fires are your friend times a million. See how I'm cold right now? The fire just started. But if I could put this canned pork on the cooking section, and I put this dog food on the cooking section, it's a can, so it can warm up. And as it warms up, I'm going to let it get to 100. I'm just gonna watch. You're gonna, you're gonna, you're gonna trip out. Okay. We have 70. We have 60. We have 70. We have 60. Notice how it's still frozen. Still frozen. But as soon as I can, I'm gonna put these in my inventory at like 60, 70 degrees. Okay. And look at my temperature. Right. I can use the canned food as a sort of tool to warm me. Okay. Something I can do. If I leave this can here forever, though, I'm gonna die. Or, or sorry, it's gonna, sorry, I'm not gonna die. It's going to go to ruin status, okay? So I gotta be careful with how long I leave it on there. So keep a, keep a tab on the worn status right here. But as you see, it allowed me to get past, when I put these in my inventory, it allowed me to get past that period of being freezing before the fire got warm enough, right? And now the fire is warm enough, I don't have to worry about it, right? So I can put these on here. And now they are f not frozen, Right? They are freezing. So I could technically eat this right now if I wanted. Okay? But there's another thing we have to worry about. We have to wait for the temperature of this dog food to be under 65 degrees. Okay? And the problem with that 65 degrees is this doesn't show us the exact degrees in Celsius it is. It shows us in 10 degree in increments. Okay? So right now it's at 70 degrees. And if I put it in my hands, I don't know if you can see, but it's smoking a little bit, okay? So if I were to eat this while it was smoking, it would give me damage, okay? I'm just gonna show you a little bit. So this one right here, it's freezing. I'm gonna eat a little bit, watch. Okay, so this one's not, not too cold. This one's 80 degrees, watch what happens. I'm taking damage, right? I can't eat it. If it's over 65 degrees okay so what you're gonna want to do generally speaking if you're dying to like food right is you're gonna want to get it to like 70 degrees and then take it off the fire so it could thaw out naturally because it takes quite some time for it to unfreeze as you could see and even even as much time for it to cool down from a hot temperature okay so I've covered all of my slots the next thing I'm looking for, obviously, is a weapon. We're always looking for a weapon. We're going to make sure we're geared up and ready to go. I don't have any bullets in any of my guns, which is unfortunate right now. I'm going to go ahead and eat this rice. Because I could eat this even though it's not. it doesn't need to be thought. It doesn't get cold. Now, what I'm waiting for for my temperature down there is I'm waiting for a plus sign. So it's gotten to the point to where it's not pointing an up arrow or a down arrow. That means I'm close, okay? That's like a sign you're getting close. And watch right here in the top right corner, you're going to see a plus sign pop up. Okay? So I'm leaving these. Notice how these aren't canned food, so I can't put them on the cooking slot. They're freezing right now, so I could eat these right now. But if you eat things that are frozen, there's a risk of a bug that will kill you. It'll freeze you to death. Like, freeze your insides. So don't do that, okay? Wait until it's completely unfrozen. Don't torture yourself. Technically, you could drop these into the fireplace, but they're going to take damage really fast, okay? Watch, I'll show you really quick. If I keep highlighting over it, damage, 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 damage. Badly damaged. I'd have to drag it out. And now it's drenched compared to this one that was taking more time to get undrenched, okay? So that's just a way to get it a little bit quicker if it's in good status. So look at I have a plus sign. What that plus sign means is no matter what the environment is outside, I will be fine out here and not take damage until that plus sign goes away. Okay, chlorine tablets, huge. Okay, so I'm just going to show you guys one little spot. 
This is a guaranteed gun spawn. There are a lot of these on the map, okay? And this is one, okay? We climb up this little hitch here. And up here, we have a guaranteed gun spawn. So, ooh, someone was up here recently and looted it, actually. So someone looted it. But up here on these, like on these little, how do I say? Oh, look it. Never mind. Boom, 380. It'll be a guaranteed gun spawn. It'll be something related to a gun, right? Now, if you see, it's illuminated as hell. But I just got my plus sign, okay? I'm gonna want to leave as soon as possible, right? That's very visible. It's easy to see. I see a well here. So before I leave, I'm gonna make sure to fill up on the water at this well. I don't have anything to drink with right now, which is really unfortunate. But hopefully we'll find something later so I could show you guys a little something about um, the water in this in this particular thing. If I find a water bottle right here, for example. Is there one right here? Nah. If I find a water bottle right here and I pick it up, it will say freezing, frozen on it, right? Because it is frozen. The water bottle is completely frozen. It's frozen over. The water is obviously it's in this world of frozen. What I could do, which I hope to show you later. I hope I run across it. Let me kill this guy really fast. What I can do to that water bottle is fill it up at a well with a little bit of water and the water from the well will thaw the water bottle out and then I could pour it out and refill it really fast. So I don't have to thaw water bottles ever. I hope to come across that in this guide so I could show you, but just in case I don't, I wanted to plant that there right now. <laughs> okay, so we're gonna head out of this town. Now, you learning how to navigate which way is out of a town is gonna take time, okay? I do recommend for this map, you try and find an in-game map. It's incredibly powerful. Ooh, epoxy putty, wonderful. And a machete, we're gonna take that as well. Cause it can really be a incredibly powerful game changer for a lot of players, okay? This once again, another guaranteed gun spawn in this barn here in Jalabisco, okay? So now we're leaving our coastal town Jalabisco. It's important to note all of the spawn towns on the north, okay? Notice how I still have the plus, so I'm just running like the wind. I'm make, I'm covering as much ground as possible, right? Okay, but words of the wise, all of the spawn towns on the north, all of the coastal civilian spawn areas like this, right? All of these Jalabisco, Nemsk, uh, the one right before the land bridge, which we'll talk about, and um, sorry, the one on the other coast, I forget the name. But all of these have incredibly high food spawn rates, okay? So when you go to these buildings, make sure to loot them and loot them fast and get out, okay? We're not gonna wanna necessarily, if you have an opportunity to make the fire inside of that town, okay? You're gonna wanna, you're gonna wanna get out of the town and make that fire. Notice how I didn't make it in the core of the town, I made it in that little shed out there outside. Okay, so now when we leave that town, remember which way you were on the coast. So the coast was that way when I spawned. Try and find a road that leads out of that. It's incredibly important that we keep going the same way, okay? On the Molsk, you could run in circles, and you will run in circles. It's part of it, and you'll go, how the hell did I end back here, right? Especially if a blizzard happens. There are snow blizzards where it just whites out your entire screen, right? So you will ultimately have some trouble navigating the different circumstances, okay? But a good marker for for the north is this refugee camp up here. So I, I don't know if you can see, but there's little military tents up there, okay? In the shadow of those military tents are two things. One, a civilian town right here. Two, the other side of the map, okay? So this little military checkpoint on top of the hill is like a beacon for hey, you're about to transfer over to the other side, okay? And let's say I didn't have food, which I have a bunch of food. I'm gonna wanna get as quickly as I can out of the north of the map and traverse to the south. The reason being, I'm gonna find more guns in the south. I'm gonna find, I'm gonna find more armor in the south. I'm gonna find more advancement in the south, okay? But I'm also gonna be challenged. If I didn't have food, I would loot the town that I'm gonna show you right now because once I get to the south, my chance of finding food is gonna decrease massively, right? So massively. So it is super important when we do our initial push that we have a couple food items. These, I don't even count these. Don't even count these guys. 
I have like a couple food items that will carry my food stat all the way to the south so I can get a gun and defend myself or hunt something for food at that point, okay? So once again, the military on top of the hill for the north, okay? In the shadow of it, right over here on the opposite side of these trees is the civilian town, one of the four major civilian towns that you can get loot at, okay? And food and water and all those goodies, okay? I'm gonna show you guys another well here just in case you do come to this place and it looks like I'm yellow water, which is unacceptable because alongside there only being no food spots in the south, there is also only one well in the entirety of the south, okay? Actually, there's one well in the entirety of the south and one on the, the sort of connection point to the two, okay? So in all of the south, there's only one real well that you can get to. So it's important when we leave this place, we have either water purification tablets and something to put water in, or we have a completely full stomach on water, okay? So I'm gonna go over here and show you. This is the town that is outside Vorkuta, which is over there. You can see the apartments, okay? That's like the, the massive town, and maybe I'll do another run where I show you guys a Vorkuta little trial. But this town will have a bunch of food spawns in it. Very similar food and, and everything that you could ever ask for, okay? And in between these two different areas of the town, uh-oh. In between these two different areas of the town is going to be a well up on the hill here, okay? So let me get rid of these zombies really quick. Brass knuckles are the way, guys. The way, the truth, the light. Alright, so we're just gonna stagger the zombie. Kill the zombie. No loot. I think my dog needs water. Hey. <laughs> there you go. Drink the water. You just did that and now you're not going to drink the water? You little bastard. <laughs> okay. So there's a well right here. Okay. Oh, what? Huh? What? Nothing to see here. Are these disinfected? Please God say they're disinfected. Okay. All right. So we found a well here. We're gonna wanna fill our stomach at the well. I'm gonna repeat the same thing from the Chinaris guide. When you find a well, drink until you can't drink anymore and then dr wait, loot the town that you're next to and then drink some more. For this guide, I'm not gonna do that because I wanna show you guys the whole progression in an hour's time, time span here, okay? But when you find a well, you're going to drink until you can't drink anymore, okay? Until you, until you get the stomach icon, and then you're going to loot the town you're next to, and then come back to the well. It is incredibly important that a stomach is full on water, especially on the mosque, okay? But for now, I'm just going to drink this little bit, okay? And then we're going to head out of here. I'm going to wait until my stomach's full, because that will be enough, I think. Okay, no, never mind. We're just going to go. Okay, so, like I said... You would be looting this town, but I'm just gonna I'm gonna do a quick run through just to show you like how much food and gear can spawn here, okay? And I guarantee I'm gonna find something. There's ten people on the server, so not a completely packed server. But ultimately there are people here that could be looting before me. There's a shotgun right there. I don't have any ammo, so that's useless to me. A BK, a giant backpack. I'm going to take it for the lulls. And also, you'll notice that the giant backpacks have really good insulation on this. So I have high insulation on this backpack. That's why it's super good. Okay. And a lot of people may suggest you wear white on this map. And I am wearing white on my hood, as you can see. But it is not ideal. Okay. So low insulation, medium insulation. I'm going to upgrade there. Okay. As much as there is snow when I get to the south, wearing white does not benefit me in any scenario except for when I'm on the snow. So don't don't think of the map as something where you can use like winter camo. It's still bad here, okay? It's not good. <laughs> All right, we're gonna head south here. 
All right, so I looted the shadow, the town in the shadow. I would technically drink more water. Looks like I'm yellow on food, but I'm going to go ahead and gobble all this food down. So now this military checkpoint up here, okay, is one of two sort of uh, references for where you are on the map, okay? So there are two locations, which I'll show in an overlay right now. Show the overlay, Cameron. These two locations right here, okay, have the only ways to pass to the south without swimming okay you have to go over either the land bridge or the man-made bridge now where i am currently this is right above in the shadow down there Ooh, look at that aurora borealis right over there is going to be the the marsh bridge the land bridge okay the other one is like a man-made bridge okay and here is this military now if I go into the middle there, guys, it's going to be tough. There's going to be so many zombies. They're going to aggro all over me. Something that a lot of people do is they'll jump up on this and they'll fight all the zombies one by one. And that can even get really dicey because then you're shooting a bunch of bullets up there. And um, ultimately, you're, you're, you're probably going to get found and caught out. So what I recommend is trying to stealth around, sneak into a couple tents, get a little bit. If you see a plate carrier, obviously kill the zombie with the plate carrier. And then get out. Do not get greedy in these tents, okay? As you can see, I'm currently having a cold issue in the bottom right. But I am not worried about that at all, okay? Why? Because all of my limbs are covered. And I am currently in not risk, not in risk of getting wet, okay? Looks like these pants are a little bit better. I'm going to go ahead and take all this. gas mask that could be big for later if everything goes right which this is what that's what this video is all about so hopefully it does <laughs> I'm gonna be wanting to stay out of line of sight of the zombies most importantly you don't want to go right in front of high insulation beautiful okay so it looks like I am gonna get aggroed on probably right up here I'm going to try and get out now before that happens. Ooh, a heat pack. Nice. So I just found a heat pack. I'm going to pop this guy and see if it can hopefully put me over the threshold here. Remember to put it in your pants or your jacket. So as you see, when I'm full sprint in the bottom right, it'll go up. That doesn't necessarily mean that I'm warm enough to be okay. Which kind of sucks, because I'm pretty pretty well covered right now. Let me look. I guess I could do that. That'll probably put me over. My s yeah, but it'll be a waste of my gas mask. Okay. Alright, so I got food. I got a means to protect myself with this pistol here. Even though I didn't even load it, because I'm absolutely out of my mind. And we got a heart full of gold. Now we are going to want to push south, okay? And I could even almost see okay so this right here is the land bridge okay there are three pathways across the left the middle and the right okay all the way over there is the man-made bridge that I, that I showed you guys earlier I better have showed you guys I better have added that in I swear to god okay so when you cross this if I go left I'm guaranteed zombie aggro right there when it connects if I go in the middle I'm guaranteed zombie aggro right there in the middle and there will be loot associated in the middle okay but if I go right, I could almost avoid all the zombies, maybe even avoid all of them, and I will be the least visible of the three. So for me personally, I only go right. I've stopped these other two entirely, unless I found a plate carrier and a Mosin up here and I'm feeling like Giga Chad 2.0, my chin is just protruding out of my face a ridiculous amount, right? I, I always want to travel these two um, locations as lightly as possible i want to make sure i'm barely seen and i want to make sure not to fight a billion zombies because i have no armor on and ultimately there are a lot of zombies here i can't tell you how many groups i've seen die okay so now that we're close to the south point and this is a thought you could think about even before this okay if you ever go to vorkuta vorkuta okay there is this giant red pipe, okay? 
Can't really tell it's red because it's nighttime right now, but believe me. There is this pipe. And this pipe right here will lead you all the way from Verkuta, which is the big center town with the apartment buildings. Let me see if I can see it right over this ledge here. See the apartment right there? Yeah. It'll lead you all the way from that, all the way to the to the military points to the south. This will take you all the way through the map, okay? Pretty much as far as you need to go, it'll take you. So if nothing else, you could just follow this and keep it next to you, okay? This is like our saving grace, this little pipe here, okay? And I'm going on the right of the three. So one, I'm not gonna be seen and I'm gonna ride this right side and you can do it any way you want through here. But I have found if I stay all the way right, it makes me visible to this very untraversed land here, sure. But ultimately, all those areas where people are gonna be looking for people over there on the bridge and to left, I can't be seen, right? So I highly recommend just running this shoreline right here. And just to prove to you that there are zombies here, there's a bunch of zombies up here, guys. Right over this, they stay hidden. I live amongst them. One, two. There's probably like three down there. There's probably two right in front of me to the left. Probably one in these bushes. Zombies, zombies, zombies. They're, they're in the bushes, guys. Trust me. So you want to stay close to the shore right here. And then as soon as you think you're past that little checkpoint, you just want to get out of there, okay? And now... I am on the south side of the map. From this point forward, no more food spawns, okay? So what does that mean? What do we think that means? That means that I need to find a weapon that can hunt an animal, whether it be a bear, a deer, a wolf, right? I need to find a weapon that can hunt an animal that will allow me to get food to satiate myself, okay? So look at this guys, I'm running along the red pipe and that's all you need to do, really. You need to trace this red pipe and you can break off of it and there are plenty of places you can go and I'm gonna show you sort of um, the different courses you can navigate through but in general, this red pipe, if you just follow it, it's gonna fulfill your destiny for you, okay? But right here is an airfield. I could go to this but Ultimately, not really good spawns. And over here is a little construction zone, right? You can see the little white thing sticking out right there, okay? Pretty much everything right on the border of the the two travel points, so the man-made bridge and the marsh bridge, everything on the border doesn't really have gear, okay? They may have some industrial clothing. They may even have an epoxy putty, which is incredibly valuable. But as far as like weaponry, all of the locations associate, associated with the, the two traverse points, they're not really gonna have weapons in them. So something I always recommend to people is to skip these two. And also for the land bridge right next to it, there is on the land bridge, there's a bunch of industrial like buildings and a little bit of military loot too. Um, I, I, I recommend that you skip it, okay? Reason being, you want to get a little bit deeper into the map and you want to get a little bit stronger gear, okay? So I got high insulation on this bad boy, even though it's damaged, I'm going to switch on over. The main thing I'm looking for now is a face mask because my character, if I look here, low insulation. So that's really, really doing damage to me. As you can see, I've been chunked again. Ooh, baby, give me that. Uh... I've been chunked again, so I'm missing HP because I'm not warm enough, okay? It looked like when I was in that building, I was warm enough for a moment there. So I may stop and make myself a fire, but as I told you guys before, we do not want to waste time and make fires in places that are um, predictable or easy to be seen. A lot of people like making fires outside, like for example, just going into a tree and making a fire. That's always a good play. The problem with that is it takes a longer time to get uh, the heat buff and ultimately it can result in your fire going out via the cold or the blizzard or or uh, your smoke plume drawing someone in all the same so I always recommend that you find a fireplace in game like this okay but even that one outside right I don't I don't really want that what are my gloves good gloves but because I am so cold I gotta stop 
We're going to make it happen. We're going to check something here. See if I can find a face mask in here. Maybe to warm me. That's a good spot for a fire right there, I think. Okay. Now, I normally wouldn't make a fire here. But I'm just trying to play as if I'm you guys. You know what I mean? I'm trying to play like I don't know what's happening. Obviously, I do. I would make a fire up there at the train station, which which we'll go to in a second. But I just want to point out that when you are traveling through the map and you come across all these different destinations, okay, you always have to ask yourself, people that are walking a similar path as me, because everyone has to walk a similar path as you on this map, right? People that are walking a similar path as me, do you think they're going to stumble upon me in this fire? I would say... 30% of the deaths on this map that happen are related to one thing. Someone makes a fire, they're trying to get warm, someone else shoots them through a window. Okay? So how do we how do we how do we reconcile that? Well, first off, you make sure you have cans on you so when you make a fire, you can warm yourself right away, right? This also works for a cooking pot or a stove top, right? So this has barely any dog food left. Look at there's barely a little white chunk right there, okay? But it still gets warm. And if I get it up to 70, 80 degrees, watch this, boom, boom, it's going to get me up to white, I pinky swear. And then because it's getting me up to white, I'm getting the heat buff even faster, right? So I have these, I have these ways to use the food that I find and the different items I come across to help me navigate the cold a little bit faster than I would otherwise, right? Uh, here's something important. If you ever have a flare and you light it and you use that to light the fire, right? The lit flare. After you light the flare, put it in the fireplace. Because the flare lights up like a big area. And if you put it in the fireplace, it'll slowly fizzle out in there, okay? So I actually want these to be 100 degrees. And I want to put them in my inventory. Reason being, the longer my inventory warms me the stronger my journey going forward is going to be, right? I'm going to be able to keep that heat buff. I'm going to be able to be warmer for a longer time, okay? So I should get the plus sign pretty soon here. As as we're going to see that little arrow up on my temperature gauge down here, it's going to stop going up and it's going to not be up or down. And that means I'm really close to the heat buff, okay? It's a sort of, you can use it as a marker, okay? Boom. My arrow is in up or down. I'm in white. That means I'm close to the heat buff, okay? And what do we know? As soon as I get that heat buff, what am I doing? I'm putting feet to the floor, okay? And what am I following? I'm gonna follow that red pipe all the way to the, to the big loot, if you will, okay? Now, when it comes to loot in the south, there are a lot of different loot pathways we can take, and I'm gonna, I'll go into depth a little bit about that in, in a second here, but the main thing we want to do is we want to we want to balance the risk and the reward of the loot table of the location we're going to okay and ultimately how are we going to do that we're going to do that by by playing the game enough and looting those areas enough to find out what gives us the juice right um now i'm just going to fast forward and take you to athena by that red pipe so i'm gonna i would walk 5,000 miles sort of situation here and show you how this pipe right here can take you to Athena, okay? But I want to keep that. I want to get that bonus. I got the bonus. Boom! I'm out of there. Okay. <laughs> Look at this. I'm just gonna follow this pipe. Okay. We're out of here, guys. Bye bye. And I would walk five thousand miles, and I would walk five hundred more just to be that man that walked five thousand miles and showed up at your door. Ba -da -da, ba -da -da. And we've made it, okay? This is sort of the marker to where the map really begins, if if I could say it that way. Um, So this is Athena Research in the uranium mine. Up on the hill, you can see candy cane, that little spike on the hill. And everything is pretty much surrounding Athena research as far as the rest of the game goes when you get to the south this particular island it see it really feels like the research center is the hub and everything surrounds it okay so for the rest of this video I'm not going to be progressing any further into this part of the map I'm going to let you guys battle that out because I've already given you the tools to get a good start and hopefully that gets you to here 
and from this point forward i would like for you to do it blind because i think that is how you enjoy the game the most is with a little bit of knowledge and a lot of wonder you know so moving forward from here if anyone doesn't want to see the rest of this is not going to be any spoilers towards the rest of the game i'm just going to tell you where to do the mission things and what the mission is and just some general nuances with the map so if you don't want that information it's all good thank you guys so much for watching if you do hang around let me know what you learn all right so i'm gonna try and not spoil anything and still let you guys adventure but give you a direction okay so first off we spawn on this north coast what does that mean? That means you're gonna to wanna to push south, okay? All of the food spawns that happen only happen in that area of the map. Everywhere else, else, once you push south, past these land bridge and man bridge that are right here, once you push south, you're gonna be supplemented with more animals and more food, but those animals are normally wolves and bears. You find a lot of deers, but mostly on Terra Harbor over here. There is a storm that happens, and the whole idea of the map is related to this storm, this EM, v event i believe okay don't don't quote me with that but there's a storm that's going to happen and when that storm happens you have an opportunity to travel to this world called a3 and a3 has an opportunity to travel to this world called lantia okay it's like a dream within a dream sort of thing and in order to complete this lantia mission you need a couple things first off we're gonna talk about a lot of these items later, but I'm gonna tell you where to find most of them. First off, we are going to find a key card only at this one location called SCAT 12, which is way up here. And this key card is mandatory for our travel to Lantia. Okay, so we have to at least kill someone who's gone here. And alongside that key card, we're gonna need a Pulsar locator, which we are gonna find at Athena Research, which is the place that we just showed you the outrim of right earlier. Now, when the storm happens, we are going to have to have an MBC suit or a gas mask if it's gas mask only mod on your server. And we're gonna have to travel to this place called Athena 2. And it's an underground pitch black bunker. And when we go down there, we're gonna have to press a button that is located here. When we press that button and the storm is going on, we then are gonna run across the map to the orb and we are gonna jump in it. And that's gonna take us to A3. When we are in there, there is a panel that we can find that we can put our components into the pulsar locator and the access card, and it will open the door to Lantia. But furthermore, if you go to Lantia just in fresh clothes, you're gonna die. So you need the suit. And how you get that is you go to Terra Island, which is this island located here. You get all three filament, which is a red, a blue, and an orange. And you get a blueprint, which will spawn somewhere on the coastline. There will be an orange like preserver raft that will have a blueprint, a little blue disc, which I'm gonna show you in a little bit here, okay? And when you take all those, you take the three filament and the blueprint and you take it over to Phoenix with your MBC suit, okay? And you print the spacesuit. Now the spacesuit has limited inventory, but it is super plate carrier 5000, okay? And now I'm gonna tell you about some of the custom content, which are items that you won't see on other maps that you need to understand that are important on the mall. So here we go. All right, so these are all gonna be custom items that you will only find on a mosque. And you, you don't need to know what they do per se, but you need to understand that they're important, okay? So all four of these are related to the traveling to Lantia. Most important of them being the Pulsar Locator, the second item here. This is mandatory for travel to Lantia. The other ones do different things, but I'll let you kind of read the description of the item when you find them to figure out exactly what they do. But know that this second one you can find in Athena Research and it is incredibly, it is vital to you traveling to Lantia. Next up, we have the Muon Detector, and this can be found anywhere on the map, any military installation. And it will essentially act as a walkie-talkie on your backpack that will that will beep when the event is starting. So it will kind of give you an early jump on the event. So if you are trying to travel to Lantia, you'll be aware of it, okay? Next up, we have Bubson's Namal soundtrack. Bubson is a really cool dude. He made this soundtrack for Namal specifically. And if you take this vinyl and you put it in the record player at Candy Cane, it'll play over the entire map, okay? Next up, we have the APSI mask. Now, this is a, a mask that you find in higher military tiers areas, and it will, when the event happens and everyone goes unconscious from the storm, this will let you not go unconscious. Incredibly powerful, okay? Next up, we have the Athena access card. This is what I talked about, can only be found on SCAT 12, the submarine to the northeast, okay? And this, just like the Pulsar locator, the one I showed you earlier, are mandatory for your travel to Lantia. These two items are what get you there, okay? So this one is, if you ever see this, it is a gold mine, all right? 
Next up, we have a bunch of documents, okay? There's actually way more than this, but I just picked three at random. And all of these are gonna be lore related to the story. If you find them, open them up, take a screenshot, and then read them later. They are really full of interesting stories of different characters and their battles in this, in this place. So I highly recommend checking it out. Now we have the things that you need in order to make the spacesuit, okay? You're gonna find these three filament on Terra Island like we talked about earlier, and that blueprint is gonna be on the coast of Terra Island. So just circle the coast and you'll find the blueprint, but those filament are hard to find and they will only be found in the, in the sort of like industrial areas of Terra Island, okay? And after we manage to gather all those things, we're going to make the spacesuit. And we're going to do that at Phoenix, as I expressed before. I'm not going to show you the spacesuit. I'm sure if you want to, you could definitely find spoilers. But I recommend doing this blind, as blind as possible. This is a map with an incredible ambition that was put behind it in its original inception. And I think it really is a beautiful project that if you immerse yourself in, you can have an experience unlike any other. It is what brought me back to Daisy when I felt like it was getting stale, when I only played Shinaris. And I highly recommend people who have a lot of hours on other maps to really explore this wonderful world that Sumrak and uh, Bups in through his music have created and everyone else who's worked on the project. It is phenomenal. Thank you guys so much. If you guys like the video, please drop a comment, drop a, a like, drop a, all the stuff. You know what I mean? It, it does a lot for the video and it does a lot for me. I never imagined that my videos would be doing this well. And I'm so happy to hear that so many people are, are finding, finding some good information in them. So thank you guys and good luck out there.